they turned the thing loose, it took off so fast that it startled them. He said all he could think about was going to ride straight down into that ground. He reared back on that elevator stick as hard as he could to see if it would go up. And it did straight up. It <laughs> all up and crashed. Three and a half seconds in the air. He wrote in the diary that night to change it did before one The math before misery. <laughs> Make that long story short, it took the rest of the 14, 15, and 16 to put it back together. That's how we ended up here on December 17th. Now when they woke up that morning, it was entirely different than the 14th. It was 32 degrees out here. Winds coming off that ocean like the are today. 23, 24 mile an hour, gusting 30 and above. Bitterly cold. At first they were going to wait to see if the winds would die down some. But each minute they waited, their anticipation grew to the point they said, you know, we really don't care what the wind is. We're going out there, we're going to do it today, and we're going home for Christmas. They came outside of that little building, the signal to anyone around here saw it, come on over, give me a hand, I'm going to fly today. You see, that is the way they got out. These locals have been watching this all along for four years. They understood what the rights were trying to do. They really believed they were going to do it, and they were always willing to lend anyone a helping hand. Five people came over here that day. Three that worked at the closest life-saving station. A lumber dealer from Manio who was out here to clean up a boat wreck, and a 15-year-old boy who simply forgot to go to school that day. <laughs> <laughs> now it's Orville's turn to be the pilot. That means that Wilbur has to hold that right wing kit and run with it when it first starts because this thing's launched on a singular monorail. We got a 145 pound man over here on the left, 200 pounds of engine and other materials concentrated on the right. So as soon as it moves, it would tip over. So he's got to hold that and run with it until the game gets lit. Orville showed a man by the name of John Manning member of the life saving crew, how to operate his camera to take a photograph of the first flight. Supposedly this today had never touched a camera before in his life. And now we want to take another look at this photograph. 10.35 a.m. that morning, horrible at the controls, they finally turned him loose. He starts moving down that rail and lifted it into the air, just like an aircraft would do today shoving it into the wind. He went 120 feet. Stay in the air 12 seconds. Hmm. But as soon as it goes down, he realized that it had taken place. That was he had just made the first successful controlled power flight in a heavy and air machine. The first time it ever happened on this earth. And as soon as it stopped, he jumped off and ran as hard as he back over to John Daniels to see if he got the photograph because he realized how important that was. What he found when he got there was John Daniels, a man who'd been helping him off and on for four years, who understood and realized what he just witnessed. And they said he was so excited, he was jumping clean up and down off the ground and screaming and hollering. <laughs> he couldn't remember if he took the photograph. <laughs> <laughs> They were going to recognize him good first, and this is what they got to do. They got to take off on black ground, go up and go 300 feet, and land as high or higher than where they took off. So now they definitely got to try again. Second flight is we go. He went 175 feet in 12 seconds. So he went a lot further than the same length of time. Third flight's over again. 200 feet, 15 seconds. They're gaining on them. Stand up a little bit longer, going a little bit further each time. So folks, there's one thing we need to realize about all this. These guys are learning on the job. Nobody had ever done that much before. They didn't have a manual or an instructor to help them. That morning before they tried to take off the first time, though, they decided they did not want to get this thing pointed too high in the air, afraid it doesn't wait to get under the thing on the backwards careful machine and probably injure them. Something they couldn't afford to do out here. But what they were doing as soon as it got it off the ground was trying to stay four to six feet above the ground. I guess the wind did, so they pushed forward on that elevator stick to hold it down, overcompensate right to the ground and go. On the fourth flight, we were decided.
decided he wasn't going to do it. He was going to take the chance, point it up there, try to get 12 to 15 feet up in the air, and if he could do that, if he has to bring it down some, maybe he could get it back up before he hit the ground. So on that fourth flight, when he took off, he just pointed it on up. Got it up there, got it going, and had the wind bucking him up and down. He ended up on 852 feet. Stayed in the air 59 seconds. Total success to a triple double record. Now, folks, what we're talking about here is history. Something that happened over 100 years ago. But I want to tell you about something that happened out here now in the present just about every day. And it doesn't matter how old you are. It don't matter who you are or where you came from. But if you go out there and you stand with that big motor over there in the hall, and you stare down there at marker number four, you just block this world out of your mind for a minute. And think about what they went through to get to that point. Their determination and dedication to succeed. Think about what's carved in stone on that memorial up there. Conceived by genius. By a dauntless resolution and uncomfortable faith. And while you're staring down there just thinking about those things, if you look hard enough, you're going to see good going right on down through there. When you catch a glimpse of it, look on the ground just behind you, and you're going to see four and five more guys running as hard as they can into that same wind, screaming and yelling, Go, Boomer, go! Whatever you do, no, give yeah, up. Ladies and gentlemen, the Wright brothers succeeded because they never gave up. One more little thing I'll try to tell you about this is what it really means to us. Less than 66 years after the Wright brothers proved that man could fly, that, my friends, is less than the average lifetime. That's the span of three little generations. July of 1969, Neil Armstrong stepped on the moon. What a lot of people don't know about that is this. When he stepped on the moon, he had something with him. He had a piece of wood and a piece of cloth from the original flying machine. So you see, folks, the Wright brothers and this old flyer actually took us all, all the way to the moon. That's what you did for us. Thank you for coming. We do appreciate it.